Hello everyone and welcome to the reading of Digimon Liberated Debug Chapter 2 Part 1. Similar to my last reading, I am not a professional voice actor and I'm just one person doing their best for just fun. So if the voices change episode to episode, I'm just doing the best I can. Please do not roast me too much on the fact that maybe all the voices sound the same or again the voices change drastically from episode to episode because I'm not recording these all in one go, I'm just kind of recording these as I've got time. I also recommend still heading to the official release on digimoncard.com or digimon.net if this reading of mine is the only and primary way that you're consuming the Liberator web novel. Partially so Bandai still gets the site visits but also because each chapter, similar to Digimon Seekers, has art. And Liberator actually has visuals of each card that gets mentioned. While the mechanics of these cards are included in the reading, if you want to actually see the card itself, head over to the official novel release on digimoncard.com. And one more thing before I get started with this reading, a quick fun fact. The character introduced in Chapter 2 is called Winra, and it's not a reference to the Winra, WinZip kind of application, it's actually a play on the word Winner. His Japanese name, funnily enough, is Saikyo, which is likely a play on the word Saikyo, which means the best or the strongest. So that's kind of a cute localization because while Saikyo would not mean anything other than just a pretty cool Japanese name, Localising it to be something with a similar meaning is kind of a cute thing. I pointed this out on Twitter and Nick Pepperman said that they should have used the word or the name Victor because it has the same meaning as winner. It's, you know, the, the victor of the battle, but is also a common name. So that instantly made me go from like, oh, this is a really cool like localization to... It's it's not that it's it's it is isn't that cool. It's it could have they could have done a little bit better with Victor, but it's still a cute kind of localization that is something I really like to see because again, Psycho would not mean much to the audience if they don't know any Japanese. So translating it to something that is a word in English is 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 kind of cute. But again, they could have used Victor but it's, it's still kind of a nice localization. Now with all that out of the way, let's continue on to Digimon Liberated Debug Chapter 2 Part 1. Debug Chapter 2 Part 1 Under a piercing blue sky, a strong wind caresses the skin of those it faced. Wind tunnels created these gales in between the high-rise structures. Typically, People walking down the streets would grimace, squinting their eyes or holding down their clothes against the gusts. However, standing there today is a bespectacled young boy who goes by the name Winra, a member of the debug team. His hair streaked with golden highlights flutters, and he seems to revel in the breeze that threatens to sweep his slight frame away. He finds comfort in the breeze likely because it was associated with the rustling of greenery. Winra ponders as he stands in an area of lacuna known as the invasive forest city of the Emerald Coast, a place resembling an earth where humanity had gone extinct. Buildings are overrun with flora, their walls adorned with grass and trees that whisper in the wind. While it is easy to dismiss this as mere virtual reality, the sight of these all-too-realistic ruins evoke a sense of humanity's insignificance, sowing a sobering perspective. Winra is slightly awry from the lively central area that functions as the tutorial zone and is usually bustling with beginners. He much preferred the surrounding quiets of this area. Be careful, Winnie! You might, you might get blown away! Interrupting the silence, a high-pitched voice mixed with a faint buzzing sound approaches from behind Winra. It is a small Digimon whose body is yellow and dark brown stripes. Unmistakably bee-like. The rounded limbs and round eyes give the Digimon a plush toy cuteness. But its sharp stinger is a clear sign that its warning stripes are not just for show. 
You need to take shelter when the wind gets strong. You're so small after all, Winnie. The Digimon expresses genuine concern, causing Winro to frown and adjust his glasses. You're the one that can't move. You have to hide behind little old me, Fun Beamon. Can't help it. I get blown away easily. Uh, and and you'd have a hard time finding me. Fun Beamon buzz back somewhat boastfully, which made Winra sigh. <sighs> Why are you sighing? If you're so bored, I can leave. Fun Beamon scolded. No, it was... <laughs> It was you that said that we should come here, Fun Beamon, Winra shrugged. He had been led here to Emerald Coast by his partner, without really knowing why. Yet, at his words, Fun Beamon cocked its head, puzzled. No, it was you, Winnie. Don't try to paint me as the fool. Huh? What? As they stared at each other dumbfounded, the green-tinted wind blew past them once more. Debug. Chapter 2, Part 1, Winra. Because you've been looking all sulky and lost in thought today, Winnie. Yeah, I'll admit that. And? And while I was watching you, you were looking at the Emerald Coast map and mumbling to yourself. I may or may not have been mumbling, but yes, I was definitely looking at the map. So I thought, surely Winnie has some important business in the Emerald Coast, so I suggested we go. See, you were the one who suggested we come here. Touché. And so, after a lengthy back and forth over who had suggested the trip, the modest debate ends with Winra claiming victory. But Winnie, your face lit up when I suggested we go. Winra shakes his head at Fun Beamon's persistence. Yet, his typical unexpressive face softens slightly. Well, I was certainly thinking about coming here, so thank you Fun Beamon. Fun Beamon is a very perceptive Digimon. It can pick out the desires and intentions behind others' words and actions, like extracting nectar from a flower. Then, it usually proactively and amiably attempts to help out. For an 11-year-old boy like Winra, who is often seen as difficult and moody, Fun Beamon's companionship sometimes provided a significant relief. Since meeting Fun Beamon, his life has changed significantly. He has become slightly more proactive in forming connections with others, which he had previously considered a futile endeavour. So, he is always grateful. The gratitude infused in Winra's words caused Fun Beamon, who had looked somewhat disgruntled, to hide its discontent and twitch its antenna shyly. So, what were you thinking about, Winnie? I guess I got a little ahead of myself, Winra thought as he opened the menu screen so Fun Beamon could see. So, I heard this from Yuki. Yuki? Yuki is a member of the same debug team as Winra, and has been his friend since the beta test. She is a rare ally and friend for Winra, who does not have many. Her partner, the snarky Ipmon, gets along well with the considerate Fun Beamon. Even a year after the service launched, they often find reasons to talk. It was Yuki who first approached him. Initially, Winra was bewildered and overwhelmed by her cheerful and intense personality. But gradually, he began to share his tips on gameplay and knowledge about Digimon with her. Eventually, Yuki started calling him Teacher, despite them having a similar number of years of experience with the Digimon card game. She is also nearly a decade older than him. Winra does not mind the nickname, so he has never asked her to stop using it. Remember I told you before about Yuki finding that strange card? Fun Beamon nodded. Yuki and Ipmon obtained an unknown Digimon card from a rogue NPC and then used it to win in a rematch. This sparked lots of curiosity among their teammates due to its mysterious nature. Yuki got so pumped after defeating that rogue NPC and foolishly decided to try her luck in the main scenario battle. The main scenario is the core content of Digimon Liberator, where players can enjoy a story unfolding across Lacuna through conversations and battles with NPCs. While unnecessary for those solely focused on the PvP, many players are drawn to the grand narrative involving the fate of Lacuna and the exclusive rewards from the story missions. 
The debug team is no exception. Battles against rogue NPCs can risk data corruption upon defeat. Typically, it would be reckless to immediately dive into such a mission with a new deck assembled from unfamiliar cards. Adjusting one's deck and testing one's skills in the main story and other standard battles is common practice. However, it seems Yuki and Nipmon did precisely the opposite. And so, she went all pumped up to the Emerald Coast ruins, and then she got utterly destroyed by the bosses to Lakmon. Oh dear! Seriously, it was a total wipeout. Tlakmon came out, and just as we were trying to understand its effects, bing, bam, then boom, it was all over. That's what she said as Itmon dragged her off for a scolding, Winra recounts. I can picture it. Even from Winra's brief explanation, one could vividly imagine the boisterous exchange between Yuki and Itmon. Fun Beamon chuckles. <laughs> Some things about them just hadn't changed since they first met. So... Are you thinking of challenging the opponent Yuki lost to, Winnie? Yep, that's the plan. Fun Beamon's eyes sparkle at Winra's response. Are you looking to avenge her? Absolutely not. Fun Beamon blinks in surprise at Winra's quick response. Oh, really? I thought you were planning to take revenge on her behalf. I don't engage in such pointless actions, said Winra. Even if he defeated the opponent, it wouldn't make Yuki feel better. In a way, card games are a battle with oneself. Moreover, since the opponent is an NPC that can be challenged repeatedly, overcoming it with her own crafted deck and strategy would be the best way to gain a sense of accomplishment. But, Winra added, if it's an opponent that's defeated Yuki, I think it's a good opportunity and I don't like the idea of her always being the centre of attention. And also, I want to test out my new deck. Saying this, he navigates to the D storage on his waist, opening his library. Over the past year, the considerable allowance negligently given by his hands-off type parents had allowed him to amass an impressive collection of cards. Yet, within the collection, a few cards stand out distinctly. Seeing them, Fun Beamon's eyes light up. Ah! Those are the new cards, aren't they? Shortly after Winra and Fun Beamon heard about the peculiar cards Yuki and her team had acquired, they were on a routine mission where they subdued a rogue NPC, and Winra received a strange notification on his D storage. You got an ability item for a tamer card. It was the same sudden acquisition of an item Yuki had told them about. Though he had heard about it, experience at first hand was perplexing. Naturally, as a member of the debug team, he had a duty to investigate. However, as a player, Winra's interest was piqued by the item's unusual text. Main, by suspending this tamer, digivolve one of your Digimon into a face-up Digimon card in your security stack. If this effect digivolved, you may place one Digimon card with the royal base trait from your hand on top of your security stack face down. This could bolster the strategy employed by Winra's deck. A strategy considered unusual even within the debug team. Placing cards in the security stack face up, when he first demonstrated his deck in front of Yuki, he remembered her blinking in confusion. The security stack consists of face down cards. This serves as a defensive barrier that protects the player. If attacked when there are no cards in the security stack, you lose the game. Some cards have effects that activate when flipped from the security stack, influencing how and when one should attack. These are crucial tactics in the Digimon card game. But, ordinarily, that's it. There should be no reason to place cards face up in the security stack. However, for the Digimon of the Royal Base, such as Fun Beamon, the security stack is more than just a protective shield. Huh? What's up? Approaching, Fun Beamon peers over Winra's device, eyes widening. Winnie, this card! It says Royal Base! Yeah, if this phenomenon is the same as what Yuki mentioned... Interrupting, Fun Beamon, Winra opens his card list. As expected, unfamiliar cards have been added. Checking the effects section, 
They also contain text regarding face-up cards placed in the security stack. Could this be? Winra stares intently at the new cards as if trying to communicate with them and understand them better. Ah, I see, Winra mur murmurs. Fun Beamon looks up, eager to hear his thoughts. Winnie? Fun Beamon, I have great news. Thanks to these cards, our strategy is complete. A hive needs a leader. It's so obvious, I wonder why I didn't see it before. Winra muses, turning to face Fun Beamon. Fun Beamon, would you become the queen of our royal base? Building a hive. Back at the Emerald Coast, Winra sighs as he gazes at the brand new deck he had assembled while chatting with Fun Beamon. Sensing the change in his expression, Fun Beamon peers into his face. What's wrong, Winnie? Getting nervous before the battle? Not at all. I chose the main scenario as a testing ground to ensure there's no need to fear, Winra murmurs. But still, he continues, this deck and the strategy you spoke of, it's all uncharted territory. Honestly, I don't know what will happen. It would be quite a letdown if the cards that strangely appeared turned out not to be strong, right? Hmm. Watching his expression intently, Fun Beamon's face suddenly brightens. I see, Winnie! You're really confident with this deck! Eh? Yeah? Caught off guard by his partner's unexpected words, Winra's eyes widen. He blinks as his face showed a rare childlike innocence. Because it's your masterpiece! You're worried about whether it'll work and you're all jittery, eager to give it your all! It makes me happy to see you this excited about the deck we built together. Fun Beamon. But if you keep worrying, you might not win. You're always so calm and collected, Winnie. That's what makes you so strong. So there's really nothing to worry about. With that, Fun Beamon buzzed closer, facing Winra squarely. So stay the strongest, Winnie. You are the strategist of our royal base. Strategist. That title sounded all right. Contemplating this, Winra adjusted his glasses. Understood. Thank you, Fun Beamon. I'm fine now. He lifts his head again, looking forward. As he walks, the scenery around him transforms. A lush, vibrant jungle dotted with pyramids and stone structures, reminiscent of ancient Central America, ruins stretches before him. The rainforest is teeming with life, unlike anything seen just moments before. The vibrant life and noise of the jungle's creatures felt incredibly real, but he no longer heard the clamour. His focus is solely on the NPC standing before him, and the battle about to unfold. The game starts now. Let's build an unbeatable hive together. Leave it to me, Winnie! Exchanging words with his partner, Win replaces his hand on the D storage. To be continued. So that was Debug Chapter 2 Part 1. I apologise if there's a few stammers uh, throughout there. I'll try to edit as many of them as possible. I uh, just washed one of my dogs before this and uh, he is not happy with being washed. I have him on his electric blanket with the heater on at the moment, but he kept on like coming in to like glare at me and uh, jump at me. Uh, he's also wearing a cone at the moment so he doesn't lick himself. So if you hear any weird kind of like rustling noises or anything uh that's 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 mr langley uh saying these cross with me and just repeatedly running into me with his cone but again i'll try to edit out uh as many of those sounds as possible because then they're, they're not particularly they don't sound good uh on microphone and uh, in addition to that there are a few stammers of when he was just kind of moving around I had to stop the recording a few times to uh, help him back onto the couch where the heated blanket is uh, so if you also hear barking, that that's why, again, I'll edit them out uh, pr pretty quickly after recording this uh, this little outro. So just a, a heads up for if you have, if you heard any weirdness, um, yeah, the, any bits that I can't edit out, I'm obviously leaving in. Again, uh, I'm not doing this professionally or anything, I'm just doing this because it's fun and a lot of people did request it because people like audiobooks. And if they don't want to read it or if they want something to listen to on their commute, this kind of fills in that. And also, otherwise, there's kind of no podcasty things to do. It's just uh, the videos on YouTube that I'm releasing. But uh, yeah, so that's it for this chapter. 
or rather this part of this chapter. Of course, the next one is Debug Chapter 2, Part 2, and then it's nothing until the next update, which I believe, as of recording this, would be another two months, so I guess August, especially if they're updating it every three months. Again, as of recording this, I don't know what the uh, how many bits are going to be released each three months. I would like it if they continue releasing four separate, like, chapter parts every three months. I hope it's not just one big chunk, uh, but who knows? Digimon Seekers was different, and this again is different, so I guess they're kind of testing the format. But uh, in any case, I hear my washing machine go off, and uh, that will likely also upset my dogs. So I'm going to finish off uh, this recording. So you can contact us and stay updated. You can leave a comment on this episode on YouTube to join the conversation. And for a full list of ways to find the podcast across the internet, such as YouTube, TikTok, Twitch, and Twitter, head over to my link tree, which is linktr.ee slash lostintranslationmon. If you enjoy the podcast or videos or even my city posts online, you can show your support by signing up on Patreon and get some cool rewards such as early episodes and unedited episodes and help me hit some milestones. Again, I'm doing this just as a spare time kind of thing, so I do appreciate any uh, support I can get, even if it's just sharing the podcast or telling your friends about it or telling your friends about the YouTube channel, even if it's not actually sending me money through any of the um, support uh, networks like uh, PayPal or Coffee or Patreon or YouTube memberships, I do appreciate any kind of like support, be it financial or just like literally just yelling down the street, hey, subscribe to Lost in Translation on YouTube or something. I don't know what, uh, I'm not sure how the algorithm works. Uh, is, I'm sure it's just shouting out at random people on the street, right? Anyway, thank you to my current supporters on Patreon, Stephen Reeves, who's one of for on Archive, our own Kaidawashi, Chisai, who can follow on Twitter at Chisai236, Nubu, who says she should follow Chisai on Twitter at she side two three six. Lizmond, who is like on Tumblr, Nicholas, Emery from Gone Will Hunting, a Hunt Hunter Rewatch Podcast, Magnus, Lucas, Jason One Zero Five, Patrick, Jason, Shelby, Digital Hazard, who is on Twitch at the Digital Hazard, Drop him on Vimon Tamer, Kasai, Big Bad, Beetle Borg, and Bent Archer. You can also make a one donation on PayPal, which we found linked in the description. It's paypal.me slash ergemon. You can also donate to me on my coffee account, which is ko-fi.com slash erdra. Again, I'm pretty sure those are also linked in the link tree, but it's been a while since I set that up, so um, just put it into the good old address bar on your internet browser I suppose but in any case that's it for another recording if you are listening slash watching this over on YouTube do the like comment subscribe hit the bell etc etc but uh, in any case I'm done for another one so uh, tell your friends tell your family tell the stranger in the street and I'll see you on the next one bye